I previously did a lesson on how to evaluate the limit of sine of 2x over x as x approaches 0. Today we'll prove the more general result for the limit of sine of kx over x as x approaches 0 for any real number k. Doesn't matter what number it is, it's going to be a very similar result. Before we prove this more general limit for sine of kx over x, a couple quick notes. Remember that sine of a thing divided by the thing as the thing approaches zero has a limit of one. This is a fundamental trig limit you're expected to know. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving it. Also, a similar exercise you may consider is the limit of sine of x divided by kx. Now in this situation, if we introduce this factor of k in the denominator, we can just pull it out of the limit. So we would have 1 over k times the limit of sine x over x, and so that's just 1 over k times 1. So the limit in that situation would be 1 over k, as long as k is not equal to 0. If k is equal to 0, then this function would just be undefined, and so its limit would be as well. Now with that out of the way, let's move on to the example we're actually focusing on today. What if the factor of k, instead of being in the denominator, is actually inside the sine function? Now we can't just pull the factor of k out because it's in the sine function. So what do we do to evaluate the limit? Well, we know that sine of a thing over the thing with the thing approaching 0, that has a limit of 1. Now in this situation, we have sine of kx over x. Now if it was sine of kx divided by kx, that would be a little bit better. So we want to think about how could we get kx in the denominator so that this would look more similar to our familiar limit. Now we of course can't just divide by k. If we divide by k, we will have a k in the denominator. But you can't just do that because that would change the value of the function. So what we have to do is multiply by 1. Let's multiply by k divided by k. That's just multiplying by 1, but it will give us a k in the denominator like we want. All right, so here we go. We're multiplying by k over k. Now one quick note, we can't do this if k is equal to 0. We can't just multiply by 0 over 0. If k was equal to 0, though, the limit is quite easy because sine of 0 times x is just sine of 0, which is 0. And so the limit is going to be 0 in that case because we would just have 0 divided by x, and that's just going to be 0. doesn't matter what x is approaching. The limit of this would be 0. So if k is 0, the limit's 0. So let's assume k is not 0. And so there's no problem with multiplying by k over k. Now when we do this, what should we do with the k's? Definitely we're going to want this one to be in the denominator. That's going to make this limit look more like our familiar sign of a thing divided by that thing. However, the k up here, we don't really want that in the numerator so much. Let's just pull it out of the limit. So that leaves us with this. We took this k up top and just brought it outside the limit. The k in the bottom we're bringing into the denominator. So now we have sine of kx divided by kx. We're really close to the fundamental limit that we're familiar with. Sine of a thing over the thing with the thing approaching zero. The only difference in our limit right now is that we don't have the thing approaching zero, the thing is kx in this situation, instead we have x approaching zero. But we have to think, are those the same thing? If x is approaching zero, what's happening to kx? Well certainly it too would have to approach zero, and so in fact we have precisely what we want. So like we just said, as x approaches zero, kx will also approach zero. But importantly, the converse is true as well. If we let kx approach 0, that will force x to approach 0 as well. That's because k is a fixed non-zero number. Remember, k is non-zero because we already addressed the case when k 
equals zero. So if kx is approaching zero, that means x has to be approaching zero. So we can just replace the x approaching zero in our limit statement with kx approaching zero because we see that they are in fact equivalent. And so we finally arrive at our familiar form. We have the limit of sine of kx over kx with kx approaching zero. That's sine of a thing over the thing with the thing approaching zero, and that limit we know is equal to one. So what we're left with is k times this limit, which is one, and so the answer is k, the limit of sine of kx over x with x approaching zero is just k for any real number k. Even if k is equal to zero, this is still true. Hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions.